mapping out a post-election future for Trump and his friends. Um, this is American Issues, take two. Um, we are joined today by Tim Mappicella, our, our co-host, and Manfred Henningsen, our special uh, esteemed guest, uh, and Stephanie Stoll-Dalton, our regular contributor, for a discussion of what the um, midterms mean for Trump. Um, in order to get there, I want to just review uh, the shows that Tim has been involved in lately and point out that on November 20th, we're, we're having a, um, a marathon, a midterm marathon of all of our think tech shows that deal with the midterms. And this will be one of them. And uh, the shows that Tim has been involved in will be others. So let's look at the two that you've been involved in over the last couple of days, Tim. Uh, first was uh, American Issues Take One, and the other was uh, Rule of Law in the Abnormal. Um, so first, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Take One. What was your conclusion in Take One about Trump's chances uh, in 2024? Uh, the take is that uh, his, well, let me go back a little bit. Let's let me compare the GOP to a patient. And because the GOP is what, you know, keeps Trump alive. The fever is broken as of Tuesday. Donald Trump's allure to uh, the nation, be it the mega GOP or the regular good old fashioned GOP, uh, that was broken as of Tuesday. His chances of, of winning the nomination for the GOP, I think has diminished greatly. And why is that? Well, because uh, DeSantis was able to show that he could turn a purple state into a red hot state. And he seems to be a reasonable candidate. He has a lot more charisma than um, one, many th would think he, he would have. And he's been able to show the GOP that he can not only um, raise money, but raise a lot of money. Okay, was that the unanimous conclusion? Of course not. <laughs> Okay, let's go. To, let's go to the rule of law in the new abnormal. Uh, uh, just today, uh, what what uh, what conclusion did the, the panel reach in that case? Um, the panel basically said the the Democrats expected a Cat Five hurricane, and they came up with a Cat Two hurricane. It's still a hurricane. Um, I look at it differently. I I looked at it as. Um, Again, anytime you can replace a fascist candidate with a candidate that's not bent on um, breaking the rule of law and undermining the democracy of this country, whether I agree with his policy positions or not, uh, it's a good day for America. And I, I'm not a supporter of, of DeSantis, uh, but I, I, certainly I can hold my nose and see him as a, a, a viable contender for the next president of the United States. Obviously, if it's Joe Biden, I don't think he's going to cut it, even though he looks great in this this election, this midterm. I mean, my God, he he really pulled it out, and he, you know, it's not, it was a disaster that was averted. But it comes, you know, sometimes when we elect a president, it's not just on your policies. I hate to say, it, but sometimes it's on your charisma, and Joe Biden's charisma, um, comparatively, uh, John F. Kennedy to Richard Nixon, is is night and day. Manfred, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, I like your opinion, too, on this is a very important issue, and it's, uh, it's really something that we can wrap our minds around. Um, so I guess uh, I, would, I would start the discussion, the question to you, by asking, uh, can, uh, would, would Joe Biden do better against Trump or, or against DeSantis? Because that's a critical question here. Uh, and then what do you think is going to happen? Well, we know that he did better uh, against Trump. Uh, I mean, he beat Trump, uh, despite all of you know these conspiracy, uh, <clears throat> these conspirators who think uh, he lost. But I mean, don't underestimate Biden. He has an interesting standing point. He has no charisma. I agree with that. He is very. He is an uncharismatic politician. But maybe that image that he projects, you know, is what a lot of people like about him. You know, he's calming uh, the sea. Now, there are other candidates. I don't think Newsom will run the governor of California. Uh, then you have- Raging why, why, do you, why do you feel that way? 
he just uh, he just won hands down in uh, the election. On, yes, on election but I, I don't know. I don't think he would have uh, this kind of, at this point, this national appeal. Now, Whitmer in, where is she, in Michigan? Uh, she, I think, is uh, a very interesting character. I mean, the way how she has uh, re-emerged is, is something that people have uh, to look at. I think she has potential. She is charismatic. She will have the female vote behind her and the young vote also. Uh, but I, at this point, I will not rule out Biden. Because would, well, but, but going back to my question, would, would Biden do better against Trump or DeSantis or somebody, you know, like Gretchen, um, uh, somebody younger, uh, somebody with, say, more vital, more, uh, somebody who hasn't been through the problems that, that, um, um, that uh, Trump has had? Um, would, would, would Biden do better against a younger uh, contender? I, look, against DeSantis, uh, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, against Trump, yes. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised about this revival of uh, Biden, you know, in this, in this, in the, in the midterms, the way he, he came out, you know, in a way out of hiding. But uh, you even though he said, I, I don't know where it was, it, I think in an interview with the New York Times, when people asked him about uh, his age, you know, he has this very interesting humor. He said, you know, everybody th thinks I'm dead. I'm not dead yet. Uh, and I think that response is something that's almost classic American uh, understatement. And this tone, I think, uh, characterizes this guy. But remember though, Manfred, whatever he is now, and you know, there's an issue about his age and strength. He's, he's going to be yeah. two years older if he wins yes. to start. And right. by the time he finishes that term, he'll be mm, uh, six years older than he is now. That's getting old. Well, don't underestimate old people. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm 84. <laughs> so, I, uh, are you running too, Manfred? No, I'm not, but uh, I, uh, I find it, uh, I mean, sometimes you should not underestimate uh, old people. Uh, they may uh, surprise you, you know, but uh, he will have a tough time. Um, and I think he, for that reason, you know, the Democrats may not support his candidacy. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I really, uh, I think it's interesting. If Trump is the candidate, that is the best scenario for Biden. Yes, no, you're, I, I, I agree. Uh, if he's still alive. It'll be a horse well, race and you don't that. want a horse race. It'll be close yeah. again. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, do you really want to have a horse race that could be influenced by the Russians to sway it one way or the other? I mean- That's, that's a very important point. We should talk about that. We should talk about what, what effect um, Putin has. And, uh, you know, we, we have sort of skipped that subject over the past few weeks of dealing with this midterm. Putin is dead, politically dead. I'm sorry. Uh, he has not, I mean, his reputation is gone, not only uh, in uh, the Ukraine, in the Ukraine certainly, but in Russia as well. But, uh, I mean, he is not any longer the person that people were afraid of. I mean, the Russian army is underperforming, the Ukrainians beat them. Uh, so for that reason, uh, Putin is not, should not perceive uh, any longer as a threat, political as a threat. Um, but, that, but he has the mechanisms to well, affect American elections. And if he, theoretically, if he can get Trump elected, Trump will help him in dealing with all his problems, no? I don't, no, I don't think uh, Trump is that dumb. I mean, he is politically stupid, but I don't think he is that dumb. Uh, and I do not think that uh, Americans are incapable of uh, holding off, you know, these uh, 
cyber uh, interventions by the Russians in American elections. I think the United That's States. That's my point. Yes, they know I agree. now. They know now how to deal with that. And for that reason, you know, I do not, I'm not afraid of Putin's influence uh, in American elections. What, and, what makes you think that we have the ability to stop? Uh, Putin doing social media because everybody well, else is doing social media. Well, I think, look, there is one factor, however, you could say Elon Musk, you know, he is uh, the richest man and one of the dumbest uh, people politically at the same time. I mean, I find it utterly absurd what this guy is uh, talking about. I mean, he is a genius. I I grant you that, you know, uh, but technically and it maybe even financially, but politically, he's an idiot. Uh, yeah, even Einstein couldn't tie his own shoes. Yes. So uh, if uh, if 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 um, Elon Musk allows Trump back on Twitter, and he has said he has said that a couple of times in public. Of course, he hasn't done it yet, and he has controlled the company for at least two weeks. But if he allows Trump back on the platform, doesn't that give Trump a, a tremendous advantage to uh, rekindle, to reconsolidate his base? I'm not so sure about that, because uh, I think uh, this election uh, has been, in a way, you could say, an election against Trump. Uh, maybe that has not been. Uh, has not been interpreted that way, but I think people will see that more and more, how much Trump has become defeated. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, first, you see it just a little, and then it peaks out at you, right. and then it peaks out some more, and then you're, 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 you're in an avalanche against right. Trump. Yeah, um, but a note, of, a note of caution, We've counted Trump out for five or six years on many occasions, and like like a bad smell, he returns. No, that's true. I mean, he will not uh, he will not uh, completely leave, but I mean, he has been wounded. Uh, yes, he's been wounded for politically sure. Politically wounded in a way, you know, that people didn't expect. Uh, uh, if you were if you were advising Trump, Manfred, what would you suggest he do to get back on? I would not advise him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everyone has a price, Manford. I would, but the, the price well, has to be high. No, what would, would you advise him, Tim? What would be your advice to Trump right now? Oh, lay back like a bass in the weeds. Avoid the cameras for a, a month or two, and then come out with a new campaign, a new energy. Yeah, the problem is he's overexposed on this issue, and he said something here about uh, Fox News, and he's just looking more and more silly. Uh, he needs to take a little vacation and uh, come up with a new strategy on how his campaign and his rhetoric is going to uh, effectively hit his mega base and uh, other, other populations. His ego oh. will prevent that from... That's doing. correct, Manfred. You're right. Absolutely. So should he wait on DeSantis? Or should DeSantis wait on him? What's the better scenario for each of them? If I were Trump, if I personally was Trump, oh, that's a horrible thing to imagine. It is, yes. I, I, I would say I would announce uh, as soon as possible why. I want to get a jump on any possible indictments. I want to show the world that I'm a candidate. And now the Department of Justice is trying to mess with my election chances and possibilities. Uh, use that rhetoric, that propaganda, to um, diminish the the uh, the indictments and the possible prosecution of me. Mm. Well, I would let uh, DeSantis uh, stay away from attacking Trump. I think DeSantis uh, knows, you know, that uh, Trump is his worst, his personally worst enemy, and so for that reason, you know, he will, in a way commit uh, suicide, public <laughs> suicide, uh, by the stupid moves that uh, he is going to make. I, I, I think Trump is dead. 
Wow. It, That's great there's news. A, there's a statement. It's yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, that's wow. the end of that. You've been recording our conversation, I hope. No. What? Let's, let's, let's go on with it. Fine. Uh, no, too, too late. Too late. No problem. You mean this uh, entire conversation while she's been off has been recorded? Yeah. Well, that's a hot mic. No, it isn't. It's really fine. Uh, yeah, Eric, Eric, fix it up. It'll it'll look good. So let me let me ask you guys. I'm not sure who I'm asking anymore. <laughs> what if you were advising DeSantis? Would you tell him to move in on things? I mean, remember, Trump has said he's going to make quote an important announcement end quote on November fifteenth. Right. Um, no, he won't. You, you're not sure he will then. So I the, don't think he will. Not now. No, I think. Yeah, I agree. So what should DeSantis do? Just wait? Yes. Yeah. You know, DeSantis should make a nice little statement going, Donald Trump is so yesterday. He shouldn't even do that. Yeah, uh, you're right. Yeah, don't even that, give him the satisfaction. No, it looks uh, mean. And I mean, look, I find DeSantis uh, more dangerous than Trump uh, politically. Uh, but uh, if you ask, you know, what he should do, I think he should stay. He should remain silent. Above Say the nothing fray. about Trump. Above the fray. So let's assume you're DeSantis watching from the outside. Let's assume he takes your advice. Uh, over the next few months, what is going to happen to Trump? Do you have a scenario on that? No. I mean, look, I, I cannot, I do not uh, know how he is able of staying out of the limelight you know that's part of his ego that's uh, the way you know he has been alive he has this is what really defines him so he will not leave the stage and he may again and again embarrass himself uh, hopefully and i don't think the santas uh, will help himself, uh, you know, if he tries to push him down the stairs. Mm. Yeah, well, DeSantis is in a great, a great position right now. And right. the question is how, he, how well he plays those cards. But he may, you know, he may overreach himself, mm -hmm. you know, he mm -hmm. has this yeah. tendency, I mean, he has a big ego himself and uh, he may uh, simply, underestimate, you know, uh, the appeal that Biden, for some strange reason, gains through these midterm elections. I mean, his performance, as I said before, you know, Biden is the most uncharismatic uh, American politici politician uh, in the presidential, potential presidential group. But he has, for some strange reason, that has, I think, helped him. Not, not all that much as he would have wanted. I mean, remember that we lost uh, control of the House, um, and that means uh, we lost Nancy Pelosi, um, and, and we may very well lose the Senate. So it's not great, the result. I mean, let, let me remind you, it's not great. I'm not sure about the Senate. Yeah. Uh, uh, nobody Senate. is sure about the Senate just no, yet. I, It'll have to wait on a yes, runoff. But I don't think, uh, I mean, at this point, it's still possible that they re retain the Senate. The, but look, McCarthy's uh, leadership in the House is not unproblematic. You know, remember Gingrich, Berner, and all the others, they had to fight these uh, radicals uh, within their own caucus. And they became, uh, in a way, uh, paralyzed, you know, with, by the Republican caucus, radical caucus. And I think McCarthy is not smart institutionally. I don't think he, he knows how uh, the, the House operates. And if he has a majority of five or six, and that seems, you know, to be probable, 
he will have a very, very tough time, you know, to make anything work. And I think Biden knows that, and Biden knows how the institutions operate. Uh, but, so for that, so what, what effect does this problem that McCarthy has, uh, what, is, what, is that, what effect does that problem have um, on Trump? Um, it seems like he's, he's weak. He can't, he can't really right. consolidate his, his group. He, he can't uh, develop the right kind of coalition among the Republicans in the House. Yeah, but you have what two effect does people. that have on Trump? You have two weak people, you, McCarthy and Trump. And so, you know, DeSantis uh, can really sit there and uh, look in the mirror and uh, congratulate himself about <laughs> the situation that he's confronted with. <laughs> I want to chime in on something. Please. You know, the biggest difference right now between DeSantis and Trump is the microphone. The great, the biggest microphone in the country is Fox News. DeSantis, I think um, Jeff Portnoy just said in the last show that DeSantis has been interviewed several hundred times on Fox News. Uh, Trump is losing that microphone. In fact, one of his darlings, uh, Trump's darlings and most loyal acolyte is Laura Ingram. And here's what she said. Just recently, <clears throat> a populist movement is about ideas. It's not about any one person. If the voters conclude that you're putting your own ego or your own grudges ahead of for what's good of the country, they're going to look elsewhere, period. Wow. Well, well they've been totally loyal and faithful to him for, you know, five or six years now. What, what happened, gentlemen? Um, what 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 new chemistry do we have where they don't believe that anymore? The results, yes. Tuesday's results. I mean, no, it's not the results, but I think these uh, the sentiments that led to these results that have developed, you know, over the last uh, two years mm -hmm. in, in the country. Um, so people, I must say, uh, as uh, as critical I have been, you know, of American voters, uh, I must uh, say I find it encouraging what has happened. I think uh, in, in that regard, you could say the U.S. has regained some uh, public status in, in the world as a result of these uh, midterm uh, elections. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, grandiose, but I think when you when you read the foreign press uh, yesterday and today, uh, the world is surprised uh, that the prediction of Armageddon uh, have not come <laughs> true. I mean, every, that was really. I mean, not only in the U.S., but in 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 a lot of countries, you know, you have this uh, you have this really expectation that America is at an end. It's self-destructing. Uh, and uh, look, after more than two hundred fifty years, it's quite uh, extraordinary. And whether this is now something that will lead to a recovery beyond you know these midterm elections i don't know uh, well I let me let me th let me throw some ideas at you about that you know uh, okay it's it's up in the air on whether the senate will go this way or that um, but the fact is that there'll there'll be a lot of republican uh, options uh, in the House, and I suppose in the Senate too, because it'll be close. And so uh, they're not going to agree with Biden's initiatives. They're not going to pass them. Uh, he might as well give up on a lot of things. Um, and uh, they're going to try to, if, if, if they're consistent with past practice, they're going to try to embarrass him and criticize him all day long uh, in every way they can, thinking this will help elect a Republican president in 2024. That's been their strategy. Uh, they're not about to turn around and do bipartisan legislation, although if um, 
you know, if McCarthy was smart, he would do that, but I don't think he will, uh, or, or possibly I don't think he can. So the question is, um, what happens in Congress now? Um, and does that help clarify this? What will the Europeans think when they see a continuing tumult and dysfunction in Congress? Um, you know, remember they've threatened, well, I'm sure they'll terminate the select committee. Uh, they may try some impeachments. They may try uh, to refuse to lift the debt ceiling. Uh, there are a lot of things they will do to embarrass Biden, uh, which no. will undermine his, his you know, political strength. Yes, uh, but so they have to look at what has happened in the midterms. And I think all the things that you just mentioned, uh, I think they will be very, very careful not to overreach uh, because uh, the response of the electorate has been negative to, to, these, uh, to, to these behavior patterns that you described for the future. I mean, this you described patterns that were active, were alive during the last two years. And I think, uh, the reaction will simply be negative. And for that reason, I think at this point, it is really uh, maybe an advantage that you have Biden you know, as president because he has experienced that over the 20 or 25 years of his political career. You know, he, is a, he has been a manager of, uh, uh, Congress, uh, and for that reason, I think he may be the best person to deal with these threats, to outmaneuver uh, the Republicans, you know, who want to, in a way, kill him that way. Now, it may not, you know, that doesn't... Well, we'll see, won't we? We'll see right after oh, January yeah, no, 1st. No, absolutely, absolutely. Or before. So let me let me let me turn to one other issue. You mentioned earlier the possibility that um, um, we could have Gavin Newsom or some younger or Gretchen Whitmer, um, who knows, other uh, Democratic candidates. Okay? Um, what 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 would be your advice to them uh, right now? Should they step in? Should Biden allow them to step in? You know, because. Uh, uh, he may just not be strong enough, period. And he may see that. And he may realize it's time for a younger person um, to you know, beat off the Republican attack, uh, whatever it is. And uh, he may, he may want to make, make a selection other than Kamala Harris, because she's right. like, where did she go? She's the mystery lady. Right. Uh, so who, who are the real candidates here and what should they do? Who are the strong ones? Who who is the strongest and who is the weakest? And um, is there anybody who who could um, who could uh, hold a candle to? I hate to use Trump's name. Trump is a possibility, and DeSantis is a possibility, and maybe Abbott. Who knows what? Uh, other other uh, Republicans. Uh, J.D. Vance. I, I don't know. There must be other mm, Republican possibilities out there. But who are the Democratic possibilities? I don't think they should go out and try to kill Biden. They should give him uh, at least the grace period of a year or so to make up his mind. I think it's him who has to make up his mind and realize you know, whether he really has the stamina um, to go through that for another four years. Um, and then I think he may, uh, I think in the best of worlds, he would begin, uh, you know, to um, call up these potential successors uh, within the Democratic presidential camp. You know, call, invite them for dinner in the White House or whatever. No, we've, we've had this conversation, haven't we, Tim? Uh, we've, we've talked about how, what he could do to put his arm around the shoulder of some potential candidate and make that candidate. Right. And, and thus have an effect on what goes on yes. for 2024. Tim, you have thoughts about this? Side. It, should has, it should come from him. It should not come, I think, from candidates uh, 
you know, they should not try to kill him. Uh, well, well yeah. they shouldn't try to kill him publicly, but they should have some conversations yes. with him behind closed doors Absolutely. to say, you know, think about the party and think about the party versus your own presidency. Yes, no, 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 you're right. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So no, I, you guys I, both sound like you're more optimistic than you were a week ago. Yes, I um, am more optimistic. And, and if I ask you whether you felt uh, our democracy was failing yes. uh, or under you know, mortal threat a week ago, you might have said it was. Right. Um, do you still feel that way now? It's, um, it's, and and um, you know, I, why are you so optimistic? I, it, just, just the plain facts. I'm not sure there's all that cause to be optimistic. We still have a dysfunctional Congress. Oh, yes. And look, I, I mean, the reaction of voters uh, surprised me. I mean, it's not only the, the pro-abortion uh, initiatives that passed, uh, but uh, the tone has become calmer. Uh, I mean, this- Did you think there would be a red, uh, a red uh, uh, tsunami here? Well, I, I thought, you know, you would have, uh, maybe not a tsunami, uh, but uh, something very, very sad, overwhelming American politics. And uh, I am, in that sense, optimistic it hasn't happened. Weimar has not come to the U.S. Uh, and, you know, I was really thinking that uh, would happen, you know, uh, and remember what Americans always uh, forget when they use Weimar as an illustration, the Germans didn't vote Hitler into power. He was appointed uh, by Hindenburg, by the president to become, pre so it was a conservative cabal uh, that made Hitler chancellor. Now then, uh, you know, when he was in power, he became this charismatic uh, seducer, you know, of the public. And uh, he put first, you know, all the leaders of the left in concentration camps, 30,000 were in concentration camps in, in April. Uh, the transformation begins then. In so the are end, you saying that, that to the extent that there might have been a Republican cabal, call it a conspiracy to overthrow the government. That cabal is weakened now, it doesn't exist? Yes, yes. Uh, I think they, it may not, it may still exist, but people have, these cabalists, you know, have realized there's only so far they can go. Uh, and uh, that surprised me to some extent, you know, that you have this uh, really popular resistance in a country that seemed to be overcome by populism. Well, Tim, don't forget, we have hundreds of lawsuits already pending. There were, there were hundreds of lawsuits pending before the midterms by Republicans challenging uh, elections that had not yet happened. Um, those lawsuits have not been resolved yet. And we, you know, we make assumptions about the House and the Senate or, you know, about the direction of the, of the, you know, ultimate result in the House and the Senate. But that could all change, couldn't it? We could find these lawsuits, especially in front of Trump appointed judges, uh, to turn the tide back to red. No? True. That could happen. Um, one was resolved. And that was in Arizona, where the lawsuit was, from, I believe, Blake Masters to say, I want the polling hours to extend to 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, the judge ruled against it, and they closed at 7 p.m. So not everything goes to the GOP's way of thinking. And uh, you, though your point is well made, and, and it's possible, but I think this midterm election is going to settle itself down, and a lot of those lawsuits um, are dismissed, or they are, just don't go anywhere. And that happened with these lawsuits before, you know, after the election. Uh, yeah. And so we ha and, and lots of the uh, the judges were Trump appointees uh, who did not go along with uh, the intent, you know, of the people who brought these lawsuits uh, to the court. So for that reason, I think nothing will change there. 
you, I think, are too pessimistic in that regard as well. Uh, you're not only, I mean, it's interesting, two weeks ago, we were both very pessimistic. Uh, I'm now less pessimistic uh, as a result of the, the, the midterms than I was two weeks ago. Well, remember too that um, you know the select committee is probably going to be disbanded at the end of the year. I, uh, I mean, however moderate the new Republican forces in Congress are, uh, the House under um, McCarthy will probably disband that committee. Right, um, and so um, you don't have that anymore. And and, the, and I think Merrick Garland is under. Um, well, I'm not sure where Merrick Garland is. Uh, I'll tell you the truth, if. Uh, if any one of the three of us had been attorney general, there would be indictments already, um, but there haven't been. And um, I, I'm not sure what holds him back, but if you look at the indictments in the crucible of, of history in the past two years, uh, it, it is absurd that there are not indictments. So the question is, will there be indictments? How will this, these midterms affect that? How will Trump's uh, decline affect that? I mean, you know, political decline, call it. Uh, um, is there is there a possibility of indictments? Is it a likely possibility? Um, Tim, what are your thoughts on that? Then I'd like Manfred to tell us his. Okay, well, I no longer bet pizzas with you anymore. However, <laughs> the likelihood of indictments, I think, is very, very strong. And the fact that Donald Trump's uh, boat has received a few uh, hits to the bow with a cannonball from this midterm election, uh, all the more reason why indictments are now more likely. And I think they've been waiting. Why haven't we seen them? Because they've been waiting for the midterms to be over. Uh, expect an indictment, I think, within 30 days. And this will further erode his, his, his base, his power, his influence, his possibilities, right? Well, it's more than that. I mean, it comes down to this, real quick. Um, Donald Trump was responsible for the midterm election loss in 2018. He was responsible for his own defeat in 2020, specifically Georgia. I mean, he blew Georgia. And he was the cause of Georgia's demise in that election. And last but not least, now he's responsible to a great degree of 2022. So the question is the following. Do, does the, Repub uh, the GOP want to win elections or do they want to follow a personality? That choice has to be made. Okay. Uh, Manfred, your thoughts uh, I about the... I, I agree completely with it. And I think there will be indictments. Um, and... Uh, not only one, but there will be, you know, some coming out of the uh, Department of Justice and some coming out in, the, in New York. Uh, and uh, so for that reason- Don't, that, don't forget Georgia, don't forget Georgia. Yeah, it, uh, all of these uh, investigations are not over. And uh, I think the midterm, the, the sentiments that have really, characterize the outcome of the midterms will simply encourage uh, these indictments to become pursued. So I, uh, even in that regard, I think uh, something has changed. You know, so well, when, um, what was his name? Uh, um, the, the, the Senator from uh, South Carolina said that if there were indictments, uh, there would be violence. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. I, I, I'm thinking that maybe the, the risk of violence in any, in any context going forward is um, moderated by the it's result moderate. of the, yeah. Yes, it's, it's, it's not the same risk anymore. But you may still have these riots because uh, these idiots have not suddenly become changed. Uh, they are still idiots. And uh, they will still, you know, do what they uh, wanted to do. Uh, they are motivated by their own uh, underdeveloped political views and their ego maniacal uh, views about uh, what should happen in the United States. I mean, they're all mini Trumps. Mm, yeah, and the, the, like a great movie. And, um, uh, um, Tim, how about your, your final summary, some comments going forward? Uh, just for call, comments going forward. You know, I think about when you look at the rhetoric of one, one politician, 
uh, from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Um, should that prevent ever the long arm of justice and the rule of law from taking place? And the answer is his threats of violence was just that propaganda and, and, and rhetoric. Um, the, the indictments are going to come for Donald Trump, and the, the GOP will have to reform itself back to a sane party. Right now, it's a party of, of um, conspiracy um, uh, uh, theories and, and the belief in those, uh, the, the, the party of alternative facts and the party of election denial. Those people are going to go away. It may take some time to fumigate them and, and, and get them out of, the, out of the party, but it's going to take place. And we're going to see a more sane GOP in the years to come. What was that yeah. article you mentioned in the New York Post? Well, the, the New York Post was um, that uh, all Murdoch's uh, media companies are turning against Trump. And I read a quote from Laura Ingram. There's many, many more. So uh, you're only as good as your microphone as a politician. And Donald Trump's microphone, at least at Fox News, has been turned off. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is that uh, when, it, when it starts doing uh, a, a, a landslide, it becomes an avalanche. And uh, I think, it, you know, this, um, whether it was predictable or not, it's happening faster and faster every day. And if, when, next time we meet, we may find that it, 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 really, it really came down the hill for him suddenly. And he's stripped of his power. The emperor has been found not to wear any clothes. And I think the world is going to recognize that, knock wood. Uh, Manfred, your final thoughts on this subject. Well, you have, uh, you know, you have Republican candidates, uh, you know, Sonono in New England. He made these statements uh, about the reform of the GOP in a very remarkable way. I, last night on, I don't know which talk show it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, I think, Amanpour, Christian Amanpour uh, interviewed him, and it, it was quite extraordinary uh, how he defined the future of the GOP. Um, now, whether uh, he will get through when DeSantis, you know, uh, takes over uh, the role of a presidential candidate, I don't know, but you have these voices within the GOP not only from retiring senators and representatives, but from people in, in, in power. So in that sense, you know, you could say this midterm has already led to the beginning of a change of the GOP. Yeah, and the, and the ultimate question, which is a psychology question, is uh, how does all that affect a narcissist who needs to be in the limelight, who needs to have adulation? Uh, it probably has a profound effect on him, and it either makes him desperate or or um, or, or suicidal. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens. Right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Manfred uh, Henningsen, emeritus political science retired professor uh, from UH Manoa, for joining us. Uh, really fantastic to have you on the show. We'll do it again. And and Tim Apicella, who is a an aspiring emeritus. Uh, political <laughs> science professor from UH Manoa. <laughs> oh, they wouldn't let me in, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Thank both you. very much. Aloha. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.